Good morning, Internet. This is the old fat dad. And welcome back to another beautiful day on the Gubernation Gun Range. Today we're going to be looking at one of the tiniest little calibers available in the rimfire world today, the 17 HMR. The 17 HMR is diminutive, tiny. All sorts of adjectives for small things can apply to this little round. The particular one I just showed you is 17 grains. And compared to the next size up in 22 LR, it usually has a 40 grain bullet. You can see the difference there. Look at that little guy. Despite its tiny size though, it packs quite a punch. Again, I'll show you these two cartridges, but instead of looking at the bullets, look at the powder capacity. The one right here is our 17, and it's packing a lot more powder than the 22 LR. So while it might be tiny, that doesn't mean it's not mighty. And we're going to test out just how mighty it is today. Oh, we're going to be shooting our targets way out at 50 yards. So if you can kind of see that white dot way down there, that's going to be where our targets are set up. We're going to start with the can of dog food. And I'm not doing this at point blank because, I mean, we know that anything the 17 hits going, what does it say, 2,550 feet per second, anything it hits up close is just gonna explode. That's a given, so it's fun to do, but I really wanna uh, put this through its paces. It's, it's really been hyped as a great hunting round, and I think 50 yards is a good place to start to see what its effectiveness on target's gonna be. So we're gonna start out with the VMAX 17 HMR, 17 grainer, 50 yards. We're gonna shoot our can of dog food AKA small game simulator. And I've got the um, Ruger Precision Rimfire here. Uh, seems to be a nice little setup. Haven't really put it through its paces quite yet. So far, pretty happy with it. And then I've got a really interesting scope up top that I'm using today. This is a oneleaf.ai setup. Um, this is a four to 12 scope. Uh, first, no, no, second focal plane. Just uh, a decent scope, but the really interesting thing about this is they sell an attachment that clips onto the back and uh, it turns it into a night vision capable scope. So neat stuff. Be uh, looking at this a little bit more later on as well. First we've got some dog food cans to shoot. So first round going for the dog food 50 yards. Let's see what kind of impression we make here. Oof. Okay. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what happened. I can see through my scope that dog food went everywhere. When I hit the dog food with a 22 round, it usually goes flying. This just emptied the can out, it looks like, and dropped it to the ground. Let's check out the slow-mo footage. Well, that was, uh, that was something. Let me tell you, the uh, 17 hit right there and it I guess it was kind of a glancing shot off to the edge but just ripped the can apart and if you saw that slow motion you saw that the can was kind of hanging off the uh, <laughs> off that little target stand it hit it so hard this little piece of metal right here was driven into the wood and was actually hanging by that piece of metal because it was stuck in the wood so good that this whole can was was just hanging off the back side I I've never seen anything like that happen before uh, that, wow, that 17 is uh, going to make a mess out of whatever it hits at 50 yards for sure. I'm guessing we got an exit. So that's the back side of that, uh, that hit. And there must have been something coming out the back. But I'm not seeing a whole lot of evidence in the meat of fragmentation. So if it's in there, it's, it's sunk in pretty deep. So I'm just going to assume we, we had some sort of explosive exit. I might have to redo this shot and see what happens. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. We're going to redo this shot, see what happens. Round two with the uh, 17 HMR on the small game simulator. We had a glancing shot. I don't want to get a center hit on this dog food and really see what kind of damage we do. So here we go. Second go round with the 17 on some dog food. Okay, all right, that, that was a solid hit. Let's check it out. We got ourselves a beauty of a hit here. 
Second shot, there is the entrance and there is definitely an exit with that 17 grainer. So even though it's showing some amazing explosiveness up front, there's enough mass to get through the whole can. It's not just totally exploding in front with uh, nothing going through there. I gotta say this is very impressive. Pop the top off, the whole can is mangled. This is the kind of damage I'm seeing at point blank range with some of those super fast 22 LR rounds. Gotta say I'm impressed. Let's give the 22 LR though, it's shot at 50 yards. We'll load up some Aguila interceptors. We're switching over to the Bagara BMR. Now we got the Bagara BMR. Gonna load up a round of Aguila interceptor, 50 yards on the dog food. How's it gonna compare to our 17? Let's find out. Wow, well, you know, <laughs> the 22 definitely makes them hop. Let's check out that slow-mo. Our good old 22, the Interceptor, always one of my favorite 22 rounds. Does it compare to the 17 though? At 50 yards, I think the answer is a definitive no freaking way. There's our entrance with the Interceptor. That's the exit right there, and just so we can do a little comparison, here's the <laughs> entrance with the 17, 22, and then just a huge difference. That's an easy one to uh, judge there, no question about it. Let's take a look at the clay though. I'm curious to see what kind of results we get at 50 yards on our ballistic modeling clay. For our ballistic modeling clay, we'll start on the right side with the 22 long rifle out of the BMR Aguila Interceptor. Just got a glancing shot there, so let's send another one down there so we can get a good representation of what this little guy will do here. All right, Gila Interceptor one more time. Okay, I think that'll cut it. So we're gonna switch over. I'll leave the clay down there. We'll take a look after we're done. Switched over to the 17, and we're gonna shoot the clay on the left. Oof. Keep on getting glancing shots, but that one did so much damage. I think it tells us everything we need to know. Let's go check them out. The story of the ballistic modeling clay is a little bit more complicated than the dog food. I think the dog food was a clear winner, but the clay shows us what the real differences are between the two rounds and maybe some pros and cons for both of them. So let's start with the 22. So the interceptor, we got our marginal hit there, but then we got a good hit second time around. And that's the entrance right there, and here is the exit. And you can kind of see inside. I'll see if I can get some views inside there. But there's a really good cavity inside the clay block. So we've got expansion. We got penetration. Let's look at the 17. With the 17, here is the entrance. And we were off a little bit to the side, so we had a bunch blow out that way but it still shows us everything I think we need to know here it didn't go all the way through so these are the same thickness of blocks they're exactly the same and while the 22 punched all the way through the 17 left this massive crater and all inside the crater are little pieces of jacket and lead so the trade-off here is that you don't get penetration with that tiny super lightweight bullet but you do get a heck of explosion up front. I think it's worthwhile to do these uh, ballistic tests at 100 with the 17 because it's touted 
as kind of a longer range option for the uh, rimfire shooting world here. I'm not going to take the 22 out to 100 because I don't think it's going to change much. We already can see that it's really outgunned and if there's any pros to shooting it, you know, we, we can see that at 50 as well. So we're just going to leave the 22 out of it. We're going to shoot the 17 at 100 and we're going to see what kind of results we get. I've got the small game simulator set out there. Let's see what happens. Okay, not a whole lot to see through my scope. Curious to see what the slow-mo says. We just skimmed the top of that uh, can there, so I'm gonna take one more shot at 100 on the uh, small game simulator. See if I can get a center hit here. Okay, alrighty, that was much better. Our first shot there just kind of skipped off the top of the dog food at 100 yards, but the second shot, we got it right close to the center. And it just, it, it looks like someone just took a bite out of this can. In fact, it actually ripped off a piece of the uh, tin there. I, I haven't seen this kind of damage out of a rim fire. Yeah, sure, center fire, it'll shred it, but, but rim fire? I mean, man, that is some serious damage. Even at 100, this round is still cooking. It's still putting out enough energy enough enough static shock static shock hydrostatic shock whatever it is it's uh, obliterating these cans very impressive finally at 100 yards let's take a look at what kind of damage we can do to the ballistic modeling plate okay looks like a respectable hole from here let's take a look at the close-up Even out at 100 yards, that 17 is still doing a ton of damage. We saw that with the small game simulator, but the clay as well is showing us that we've got a ton of expansion and a good chunk of damage there. I'm going to say that the round penetrated a good bit further, and it didn't shed as many pieces in there. still didn't go all the way through, but it looked like it stayed intact a little bit better, which is what we'd expect with that bullet. Uh, slowing down between 50 and 100 yards. Still not enough oomph to uh, get all the way through, so not enough mass in that bullet left to punch all the way through. So if penetration is something that you are concerned about, the 17 might not be the round you're looking for. Before we wrap up, I want to show you the results of an accuracy test I did with our 17 HMR. So up top we've got the 100 yard groups. And aside from this random flyer that was way off, you can see these other two uh, groups are very consistent in location and size. In fact, they're both uh, three quarters of an inch, 0.75, so about 0.75 MOA. So at 100 yards, the old uh, Ruger Rimfire is shooting less than one MOA, which is very nice. And then I went ahead and moved it up to 50, so you can see what kind of results we got here and one of the groups was a smidge over one MOA at I think about 0.6 inches and then this guy was under a half an inch and under one MOA at 50. So it's shooting very consistent. The, uh, the unit as a whole with scope, ammo, and rifle is, is doing really good. I am impressed with the accuracy. Looking forward to doing more testing with our Ruger Precision Rimfire and that really neat scope from uh, One Leaf AI. I have to find some time to get out here at night and see how that does. In my particular state, um, rimfire hunting at night with some species is allowed, so I think this might be a perfect fit for nighttime hunting. But that's about all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.